Not certain if you are aware of this, but there is an obscure law on the books in the following three states, Vermont, Colorado, and Oregon, and it states the following. If you do not own a pickup truck or an SUV, you are required by state law to drive a Subaru Outback. Now, there were a group of industrious folks in the state of Colorado that got an exemption for an Audi all-road, which leads us to today and why there exists an E-Class on stilts. You see, the folks in Stuttgart, they're also looking for an exemption from wealthy aging tree huggers, but instead of getting an exemption in just one state, they're trying to go for all three states and calling it the all-terrain. So this equation may have been inspired by a Subaru, however, this is the area where it takes an extreme departure away from all things Outback. And that would be a three liter inline six that is connected to a 48 volt electrical system. First, the output of the gas engine. That is 362 horsepower that comes in at 5,500 RPM, stays flat all the way up to 6,100 RPM. And 369 pound-feet of torque comes in at 1,600 RPM, stays flat all up to 4,500 RPM. Now, this is a mild hybrid, so that means there is an integrated starter generator motor that sits between the gas engine and the transmission. And for the avoidance of doubt, there is no accessory drive, so there's no drain like an alternator off of the engine. In fact, the integrated starter generator motor, it adds 21 horsepower and up to 184 pound-feet of torque. All that power goes to all four wheels for the nine-speed torque converter automatic. Then there is the business of efficiency. I really wouldn't call this a Prius, even though it is a turbocharged mild hybrid. It has 22, 28, 24 return on the MPG, so it's more tuned for performance. Speaking of performance, uh, zero to 60 is very respectable. It's better than most Subarus with the exception of a WRX STI at 5.1 seconds to 60 and VMAX 130 miles an hour. I firmly believe we can all agree on two things. Number one, this is not intended to be an obnoxious German station wagon. And number two, it is most likely not lightweight. 4,530 pounds, depending on how you express your weights and measures, 2,054 kilograms with that. Oh, that's pretty good. Now, granted, you and I have been impressed with the system before. However, this is not the higher horsepower. This ain't the, like, the AMG 53 series. This is the more mild of the mild hybrids, and I have to admit, it works incredibly well to the point where it presents an incredibly strong case. Why would one need the AMG 53? The way it delivers power is very linear here. It's not like it comes in at, say, 3,500 and then explodes from there. It comes in way down low, somewhere around 2,000 RPM. And this, as we discussed, it is A, not a light vehicle, and B, it is not short, which means that engine has extra work to do. And the power delivery here is way better than expected. Aside from taking design inspiration from the folks at Fuji Heavy Industries, what makes an all-terrain an all-terrain? Well, it starts out life as an E-Class, which means multi-link in the front, multi-link in the rear, and then adjustable dampers all the way around. The brakes are a bit upsized on this model, 14.2-inch diameter rotors all the way around. The wheels that are fitted as standard are 19s. However, what you are looking at are the optional 20-inch AMG wheels. Now, somewhat obvious to a vehicle that is trying to be a not-so-tall SUV, all-wheel drive is fitted as standard. However, that's not a huge departure from E-Class wagons of the past, because most of them for the past couple of years have only come to the U.S. as formatic. Then there's something that's not so obvious that's tied in with some of the changes in the body cladding, and that would be skid plates are fitted as standard. Starting from the front of the vehicle, go to about the mid part of the vehicle. Which in turn brings us to one of the biggest aspects that make an all-terrain an all-terrain, and that would be the ground clearance. As a basis of comparison, uh, a 2020 model year E450 wagon, which didn't have all of this, that had a ground clearance of 3.74 inches, this has a ground clearance of 5.75, so that's quite a sizable difference. The height only increases by one inch. Let's get to the obvious question. Does this thing being on stilts create a problem for driving dynamics? I, I would say you do notice it a little bit. There's a little bit more float to this than the previous E450, obviously very different than an E63. Which you know what, for a modern day country squire, it kind of works. 
That said, there is a significant delta in the drive modes here, more so than other Mercedes. So here we are in comfort, and you see it's kind of sloppy. And this is where we're presented with a very unusual use case. Normally, I am a huge Sport Plus guy in any situation, yes, even around town, and yes, even in the modern reincarnation of the Country Squire. But here it's too much. Yeah, it cleans up a lot of the problems with the stilts and makes it feel like a normal station wagon, but I would argue it is sport that really works the best here. It's the best balance between comfort and sport plus and makes this the vehicle it is intended to be. At least the personality Mercedes is trying to bless upon it. Yes, it is indeed that time again to play your favorite game on the options game with today's contestant. Something that comes with a rear facing third seat fitted as standard that is more suited to an Oompa Loompa rather than myself. So let's dive right in so we can dispense with this torture rather quickly. A 2021 Mercedes-Benz E450 4Matic all-terrain station wagon for a base price of $67,600. To that, we add an incredible color. It's one of the Mercedes Designio colors, so you will pay extra for it. It's more like a burgundy, but they call it cardinal red. And the contrast works beautifully with all the body cladding, $1,000. The interior also a beautiful contrast. Neva gray and magma gray leather. It's more of like an ivory interior with like a darker gray inset on the doors. $1,620. And then the natural grain black ash wood. That is fitted as standard, so we don't have to pay extra for it. The air balance package, that is the atomizer in the dash, that's like perfume you can choose, $350. Then the 20 inch AMG wheels on the summer tires. The summer tires are $0, but the wheels are $1,450. Then we press on to something we see in many Mercedes Benz as of late, that is the augmented video for the navigation system. For the avoidance of doubt, navigation is fitted as standard. However, if you want the overlay of like the arrows and the signs, $350, well worth it. And then something that I have a weakness for in many cars, the illuminated door sills, $350. The chrome in this case really stand out. Ventilated front seats, optional in a $67,000 car, $450. The active multi-contour seats with massage function. This is a family car, $1,320. The panoramic sunroof, probably the most important option here, $1,000, probably shouldn't be optional. The Qi wireless charger, optional on a $67,000 car, $200. The driver's assistance package, I've told you many times, incredibly important in a Mercedes-Benz. This is the Distronic, like the active cruise control, as well as some other safety doodads, $1,950. Now, just as an aside, have I told you this is not a very comfortable seat for adults. With that exterior lighting package, that is a combination of the LED headlights and the adaptive headlights for $900. The night package, this is something we usually see on AMGs and it makes sense there because those cars are supposed to be sporty. And this package is to black out all the trim. I guess it works really well with this cardinal red and it's a bargain at $200. The acoustic comfort package, that makes everything quieter on the inside. I don't know if I'd spring the extra $1,100 for this feature. Then the premium package, this is a combination of the park assist the surround view camera, and most important to me, the Burmester stereo, but unlike a Porsche where well, that's like five grand just for the stereo, this is $2,300. Then the warmth and comfort package. Now for the avoidance of doubt, heated seats, they're fitted as standard to the car, but if you want the heated seats to heat up faster, you gotta pay extra for them. And then they throw in heated armrests for $840. Then the only thing left is destination and handling von Deutschland for $1,050 for a total retail price of $84,790. Thus far, we have learned it drives very much like an E-Class wagon, which is to say a good thing. Uh, that said, it looks a little bit different. Uh, this falls more under the heading of that Oregonian law where one must drive a Subaru station wagon. It's very purposeful in its look. I would say that beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I am not a fan of that look. However, Mercedes has done a better job here of incorporating it into a more traditional station wagon. And really, what have they changed? There are the wheel arches, 
And then the rocker panels, that's the most successful change, that it's not body color. They have this very unusual rough and tumble texture. And most people would look at it and say, I don't know why that thing looks different, but it looks different and I kind of like it. Then both the front and rear bumpers change as well as the grill. And then last but not least, there's a little all-terrain badge and all the floor mats, although it seems odd to me. Wouldn't you want those like plastic molded floor mats in a vehicle that's supposed to be all-terrain? That said, I can completely see why they did this. It's all the rage nowadays to have cars on stilts with all this body cladding, and they are going to sell every single one of them they make. But the departure where I believe these guys are gonna be a bit more successful, they didn't fall into the trap of like Audi or more so Subaru, where they offer nothing but these like olive drab colors that make the vehicles look so blah. It's always this like khaki in the Subarus and grays in the Audis. Here, this is a great example of what a traditional color choice can do in a vehicle that's trying to be more off-road, but still is a car, not an SUV. This may come as a shock to those of you that know my incredible desire for obnoxiously powerful German station wagons. I like this. I like this a lot. And the reason why I like it a lot is because it is not an AMG E63S wagon. Rather, it has this very familiar, relaxed personality to it. That along with some real muscle underneath the hood. And then there is that flash super trick 48 volt electrical system, which I hope will pay dividends in terms of reliability. That combined with everything else makes it stand out in today's day and age. However, the real reason why I believe it stands out is resale value. And this is where we need to be very honest with one another. If you were to look around and see what the Rugrats are being carted to and from school in, in normal times, they are generally Toyota Highlander hybrids that are like the Platinum or the XLE or the most expensive Subarus or things like that. And those are like 50 grand and more. Now granted, this one is loaded to the gills with options, so that's why it's 90 grand. However, base price, $67,000. And when you consider, historically, the resale value of e-wagons in the US, Mercedes, they'll never admit to this, but I think they artificially limit the supply of these things because they sell every one of them they make. And they do that because the people that buy these things and they generally buy them in cash, very few of these things are financed or leased. They have to say no to many other cars to pick these because they are not cheap. So that's why the resale is generally higher on E-Class wagons, whether it's an E63S or even the basic ones. And that's where we get to the comparison to a $50,000 vehicle you can honestly say that the cost of ownership between this and say a super expensive Toyota or a super expensive Ford Explorer, those are into the 60s, is very comparable when you consider the resale value of this. As much as I love this, there is still a wish list. It really is two things. Number one, I get why they're doing this and all the cool kids are gonna pick this, but there's still enough people like me in North America that prefer the old world understated charm of an E-Class wagon without the cladding. Can we at least have that option? And then second is something we discussed in our AMG E63S episode, the steering wheel. Yes, it is very easy on the eyes, but the UX control with the haptic feedback, A, it doesn't work that great with all of the UX in the car, and B, most importantly, it is just not safe to operate. Can we have something that is more safe to operate? That would be wunderbar. With that, is there anything I have not included on this wish list that should go on the wish list? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Moto Man TV, all one word, Moto Man TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And with that, I do want to share something more personal about this. Uh, some of you know I have family in Oregon. And yes, one of them has an Outback. So you can imagine what our conversation is going to be next time we get around the dinner table. Until I see you next time, bis später.